put this back together over that washer. So that goes there. It's a flat washer. The muffler goes on top of it. Like well, we have a uh, I think three of these. Yep. So something like this. These are T20s. Yeah, feels like a T20. They're all, they're, they're three, they're the same, just like, you know, in length. Nothing, uh, nothing's different about them. Okay, we need a spark arrestor. I'll put that back. The concave is, is upwards. Did I say that right? Concave? Uh, or co-cave? Concave, co-cave. This is all depends on your perspective too, doesn't it? And since this moves around, definitely a lot of perspectives. small one like that right here. Is everybody hanging? Yeah, that old corona thing. Found out this morning my friend committed suicide. Not even my friend, but I'm more of a close associate, you know, but I so I think this thing is just killing people. I don't know about you, where you are with your practice, but I know that I, uh, Corona's here to stay, so I'm not really particularly, like, afraid anymore. You know what I mean? And I, not particularly super social, but I do know that, uh, humans are social in general, you know? And no matter how much I deny it, I am very much in need of human contact, and this corona stuff is just driving me nuts. I have branched out a bit. I do go out more now. I'm not so afraid. But I just couldn't take it anymore. You know what I mean? What I find really interesting is the amount of, like, uh, the witch hunt that goes on online to stop people from going out, or if they do something without a mask. Now, yeah, here's the thing, right? Humans are horrible at a threat assessment. When it's too big, it's too infinite, it moves too fast, it's too microscopic, human cannot process it with any accuracy, right? We have a microscopic, dangerous thing killing people. And nobody knows really, not a lot of people really know how to properly like navigate them. All right, so we gotta put this magneto on. And I do believe it's these T, these two, um, these two 1020, T20s. Because they're a little on the, uh, it's like really small spacing. So that makes sense. Okay, so it's going to be like this.
this one off first. This is going to get a little weird because the kill switch on this is, um, goes in on the top. Yeah. I think that's how that was. So the problem is, is uh, I think it's kind of wrapped around and uh, bunched up inside of the other part. I'll show you what I mean. Alright, so we have this came around here like that. Remember that wire snaked under there? Anyway, I was telling you something about uh, what we're talking about. We're talking about um, people surviving being that we're a like a like a social creature. But that being said, you know, I acknowledge him not exactly in the highest index of like people people need for people, you know. But I do recognize I do need some people in my life. And the COVID has really compromised that. So I read the other day my friend my associate, he was a running low on sleep for several days and you know that, that that'll never if you're suicidal and you're low on sleep forget it you're gonna lose your shit sorry for cursing but uh it's just this was just just what's gonna happen whatever barriers you had up to protect yourself from your su your suicide ideations is gonna get taken down real quick and like being uh, the way this world is right now you know the conditions that we're under uh, people are not doing well, you know? And I was telling you about dangers, and how it's difficult for people to make an assessment of certain dangers. Let's just focus on the microscopic ones. By the way, this is going to be um, 0.25 millimeters or 0.0 ten thousandths of an inch. And because people are going to uh, have a hard time making an accurate threat assessment when it comes to like something microscopic, what we end up seeing is... Uh, you have a wide degree of responses to this pandemic. Now, it gets really interesting because what humans do do is understand that we can't live in fear, right? And because people understand that, they've accepted that some lives are okay to lose. <laughs> it sucks, it's morbid, but that's just what happens, you know? You can't live in a world where nobody loses their life, so people make their choices. They're like, well, this is acceptable. This amount of deaths is acceptable. So you see things like denizens of California, or you know, just kind of like on on the outside, just hanging out all day <laughs> with no mask on. You know, Floridians on the beach, same thing. New Jerseyans, same thing. And it's just people just. They're not going to do it anymore, you know, so they've just checked out. So they've made an assessment, like, this is as much as I'm willing to lose. If you're going to die, then so be it. Right? Like I said, it's morbid. And, um, people uh, that are trying to comply with this, right, that don't know themselves, or just don't really understand how far they can push, regards to like being compliant to like be isolated or minimal contact with others just they're not doing well you know and they need people so this is a uh, this was like right in here the spacer and because they need people because we're human we're social you know it's uh it's difficult big washer on top 
And because it's difficult, what you end up with is like a whole bunch of people just not really doing well because they don't have the, the amount of contact from humans that they need to keep their own sanity. And I think it makes people very vulnerable. Now for me, like I said, right, I'm not particularly, um, not particularly, I think I need some thread locker on that. What do you think? Yeah. I'll be back. Let's put a little thread locker on that. He's going to use uh, 242 blue. Probably should use red, I think. But oh boy, that's just not what I wanted to have happen. We get to stop this engine from. I want to turn this piston, so we gotta get a feel for what's happening. Because I want to tighten this, so this is off. This is gonna be tight. Tighten, tighten, tighten. I need to make sure the piston's on the way out. Okay. So right now, it's on the up. And it's past the exhaust, so... It's a little bit of rope will, uh... help it stay. Yeah, anyway, back to what I was saying, uh, saying that, uh, so anyway, kind of my associate killed himself. He didn't sleep well for a couple of days, you know, and, uh, I've been in a similar boat where I just didn't have enough sleep for several days, and it just took me out, and I was getting really suicidal, and it was hard to hear about it because the guy is just, just kind. Just a kind man. Uh, he disappeared, took off. A you know, significant other knew he was having a moment. Oops. And you know, did all she can to try to prevent him from being by himself, isolated. You know, well that didn't work. And he ended up uh, finding the keys. And you can only imagine what happened after that. Killed himself. You know? 
I don't know for sure if any of this COVID stuff has anything to do with it, but I do know that there are enough situations. It's just there's enough situations that's going to happen or have happened where people are not going to do well, especially anyone that's like slightly suicidal. Uh, the isolation is killing people. Is what I'm saying. You know, even people that are not suicidal or feeling depressed. You know. So anyway, take care of yourselves, you know. If you need to if you need to go spend some time with friends and family, just go do it, man. Don't be afraid. If you just need to be around people, just go do it. Don't be afraid. So if you look here we have uh one, two, three, four. These four right, screw into the metal part of the uh, engine right there. So it's going to be four finer threaded screws. And then we have one, two, three, four. These are going to go on to hold on to the, the body of the, uh, uh, the shaft. So. I should just kind of easily go in there, right? Okay, yeah. If it didn't feel easy, just stop. Still want to strip it, you know. We'll cross thread. It's not working. I think it's working. Okay. Yes, that worked. the chances that the wiring's gonna do weird stuff. I'm gonna take this off. Let's just, let's just double check. Now we're still good. Check. Is this T20? It's a little sloppy. Maybe it's a T25. Yes! These are T25s. Alright, so this is our first replacement gasket. You can see we have witness marks. It's a little glary. Stop it! See? Why don't I just do this? That's better. This is a 
the witness marks. And then you have that. So this side here was obviously down like that. Snows like this. Curvy side to the top. Okay. It's good to know. Here's our new one. Uh, part number is uh Seven five three zero five two four seven. Okay. There we go. Bring you back in. Okay, gotcha. Here we go. So like that. Okay, cool. I gotcha. Here we go. So this has like little teeth. So I'm gonna kind of push. We have a crankcase breather hose. I gotta figure out where that goes. It goes through there. Mm. I don't know. We have our uh, gasket here, and uh, carburetor gasket that is, and the uh, part number for that. I would just look at it first. You can see it's very different. We'll line it up in a much bigger, the new one. Yeah, size matters, but certain situations. I don't know about this. So anyway, that's what we got. I don't know, it looks a little different right here. Looks like that's where the, um, I don't know if modified or not to get the, looks like the uh, wire might have came through there for the um, ignition. All right, well, here you go. This is the part number, 75305. Three six six. All right. Looks like it's uh, uh, I don't know WO number. What does that mean? Uh, M seven four one eight two zero. We should figure that out some at some point. All right. So we have uh, we have three of these. Um, remember this? I'm gonna have Loctite on. Kind of. Uh, 
Let's hold this in place. So remember this? I don't, know if you're, I don't know what you saw, but that's the carburetor. It just sits right in here. Looks like uh, it's a T27. Nope. It's probably a T25. Yes, it is. There's a little cross ready. Let's check on here.
<laughs> Watch the old one be the uh, original. I'm sorry, the uh, non-original. I actually modified the uh, original one. Okay, not in my luck. This carburetor. That o-ring goes there. Okay, let's figure out which one's out. Okay, that's return. That's in. Okay. So this is going to be the fuel line coming in. This top one. Okay, that hole needs to line up with one of those. So it's going to be like this. So the breather hose is on this side. Sorry. Breather hose is on this side. Okay. And these really long. Now you can shh, get a little back out a little. Be so it's like we're on top of each other. That goes in here, so the recess. So put that in like that. Oops. Primer bulbs here, fuel in, fuel return. Okay, got it, got it. So, like that. Goes in behind that. And crankcase breather hose has to come around somewhere over here. So, like this. Uh, Gotcha. It'll come through. Should snake through this here. I think. Uh, or how is this gonna work? You like watching me struggle? Mm -hmm. So I kind of figured it out. So you gotta like make a sandwich. Uh, carburetor gasket, carburetor air filter housing and right here is where the uh, breather hose will come through so should go like this famous last words let's see breather hose should be kind of like a sneak around right here yeah like that okay Screw that in. 
the order of putting this thing back together is always going to be a little tricky because when I took it off, this was attached to the uh, shaft. So, you know, the, the cabling is like weird. So that right here kind of goes into, see, right here. Right. So this was inside of here, clipped into that, right. and attached to the, uh... all right, so I didn't get the order right. i got to take this back off. These are T25s, by the way. I feel like I'm talking about Terminator. The Terminator fans out there. I'm going to try to do a little something different here. Okay. So, see if I can attach this first. Throttle linkage, there you go. Like that. So, yeah, so I just attached the throttle linkage first. I think that's going to be a better uh, flow to get in this back together. Okay, because when the throttle linkage is in place, and I can kind of like press that in place, but I'll press it in place at last. Let's just uh, let's kind of screw this down. So now I should be able to kind of clip this in. See that there? Yes, you do. That just has tabs that slides into that. Perfect. All right, we're almost there. Um, so this was missing an air filter housing. Oh, we got it. And it was missing an air filter. So sometimes, you know, when you put in these things back together, get a little confused with your fasteners. So let's talk about how I kind of uh, go about resolving some of the confusion. So if you look closely, right, we'll see that, um, make sure, oops, sorry about that. Look, if you look closely, you can see that we have this fastener is a little pointy, that one's pointy. When you have we only have two of them, that one and that one. All right, the other ones have a blunt top. So it tells me something has to have two by itself. All right, so that most likely is going to be the fuel, the fuel can, fuel container. Then we have all these other ones that are all flat. These two also have a larger head, so it makes them stick out a lot, you know? Now this one here, if you look close, let's, let's get some better light. This one here, you'll notice that it's, the threads are thinner, so that's going to screw into something that's metal. That's how you know. So, just a little tip I wanted to share with you. And this one looks a little thinner than the others. Yeah, it sure does. Okay, alright, looks the same. Okay, so that's kind of like how I kind of narrow it down. Sometimes you're uh, unsure where to go, what's left. But uh, don't ever panic. Just keep chipping away at what you know. It helps you, uh, you have less parts. So this here um, tends to have, uh, the clutch tends to have a little bit of an issue lining up sometimes with the uh, shaft, the flexible shaft that goes down. So you just kind of see when a snake underneath and kind of like squeeze in there. 
just like that. Because if this doesn't work, then we're going to have to take the uh, linkage cables and stuff off. That's good. I got around. I think it kind of popped out of the, um, the part that holds it. So this has, this has grooves. Let's get into those grooves. See, like that. Okay, good. Nope, actually still, still in there. Okay. I'm going to grab... The same ones, kind of blunt. I believe they go into here. That's what makes the most sense. What's happening is uh, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of an issue with uh, getting this. So I'm going to put this dry, uh, I'll do a little dry fit for this uh, fuel, fuel tank, for the fuel lines, so kind of figure out what to do, where to go, you know, so we know how much we need. It's going to be the fuel in. And so, let's see if we get a, get a, let's get a size. This needs to flop around a bit inside of there. So. I think that's, that's good. I think that's good. Yeah, feeling good? Feeling great.
So the fuel line is on with the filter. Let's go ahead and do the same for this side, the return. Okay. So that's what we ended up with. So just gonna stuff that fuel line in. Those two clips, so those two, these two. Two of those. Okay, so we have a curvy part. Where does the curvy part go? Down or up? What do you think? Hmm. So you're in for the action. As you can see right here, it's a little bit of a space for uh, for this. I'm thinking the flat side is at the top, like that. That's what makes most sense. Flat side at the top, and it kind of curves and wraps around that. That does fit nicely. Mm -hmm. I think these two um, are the ones with a sharp sharp tip, a little bigger base than the others, and those will go right in there. Ugh, maybe not. Looks like it really doesn't fit too well. All right, well, let's just try again. Different angle. Hmm. Let's try curvy side at the top. Curvy side at the top. So you have to screw into that little hole there. So let's see what we get. Come on. Ugh. Yeah, that's it. Curvy side at the top. You have two fasteners, one there, one over there. That's not going to fit the screwdriver, but you Drink up. Another way you can tell this is the right fastener, because those witness marks you saw before the... Uh, So we have a few lines all up, back. Um, I put this on, so I kind of like tested it. it. Doesn't really line up too well. So I have to push this back so much. Can anybody tell me why this is so big? I just never really understood why they do that sometimes. I'd like to, I'd like to know. I'm assuming it um, might have to do with either limiting airflow, I don't know, or distributing something, I don't know. Deflecting or distributing, that's my, that's my, uh, that's 
my conclusion because of its size. It seems like, um, you know, misplaced. So it looks like that's a 5 8 so I got my 5 8 uh, spark plug socket. And, you know, like, there are multiple 5 8 sockets, but you can tell spark plug, plug, spark plug sockets, they tend to have inside of here, if you look down inside of here, you'll see so if you can see it, there's a rubber. Mm, maybe. Can't tell what you can see. Let's take a look at it together. You see how, uh, see the little, it's a rubber. There you go. That rubber in the bottom of the socket helps the socket itself grab onto the top of the spark plug. So, that's how you can tell it's uh, specific for that. All right, so let's, uh, let's see. So pay attention to these things. This right here is where the um, fuel lines are going to come in and the uh, spark plug is going to be right here at the top, so we need to snake those through, bring them up like that. Smart, right? Remember that one fastener that screws into metal? That'll be it right there. See, look, metal right there. So that's how you know where that goes. Okay. Suppose nothing is easy in life. It feels a little dicey like it's gonna strip. Let's take that off. shot with these things once you uh, booger the threads that's uh, uh, the old musty one saying booger the threads I'm sure he didn't invent it but you know, give him credit because I watch his channel all the time there you go that's so much better okay this is a T25. I'm going to be pretty sober watching this. I don't drop this anymore since I switched my tool. Okay. And we have a whole bunch of fasteners all the way around. Nope. 
that looks like a that's a T20. I'm gonna magnetize the uh, the fastener. Like that and it helps helps this hold stay connected to that. Especially with those weird spots, it's like difficult to get to. Things are getting scary. I have one more fastener left. Okay. Not too bad. Alright, see where it goes. <laughs> right, last one. Nothing well, makes you feel proud of them. Putting everything back. I get nightmares when I don't screw everything down. All right, so you see what I'm doing? I'm just gonna tighten this up. All right, so this is the moment I've been waiting for. Will it work? Bam. All right, so this is an air filter housing. And uh, this is part number 7530-5441. And I hope this works. Okay, a while ago I bought this air filter for something else. I was like, this is not right. It wasn't right. But this just happens to be the right air filter for this. I do not remember the part number. But, but it just sits in there like that. It traps the air from... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my god, I forgot something. Wow. Crankcase breather hose. All right, so right here, we gotta get that hose onto that, yeah? I <laughs> know you're pretty close, so might bump you a little. Yep, come on. I'm surprised no one told me. There you go, that's not too bad. Uh, all the way. All right, we did it. All right, let's get these lines back on. Remember, uh, get this right. Keep forgetting. Okay, that's going to be the return, the top one. Okay, that's this one. Return. This one has a fuel filter. choices. Let's see if this air filter will work for us. Well, we know it well, but I mean, um, the housing, that's really... 
what I was most concerned about. Shall we? Open it up. Let's see if this is gonna work. Cross your fingers. Small fingers. So this has a breather hose here. Interesting. They got duped, didn't I? Rats. Oh, poopy. Uh, either that's not right. No, no, no. Oh, I see. Wow. Got it? Got it. See what's happening here? Oh, wow. So this, is, this actually came with a filter. Hmm, interesting. So, I didn't know I was getting all that for my dollar. That's a lot of, I'll buy that for a dollar. That's a lot of bang for my dollar. Oh, see, look, that came with a filter. Holy cow, that's great. Let's try this again. That is what you call a Christmas surprise, a Christmas equivalent. I just didn't know that we I just had no idea what I was going to get there. Okay. Bingo. One set. Excellent. So if this, I don't know if it feels loose, like it's not going to hold on to the lip. Either way, I can always change the whole piece out. Lucky me. Maybe that's why the uh, previous owner lost this. Probably it got kept on flying off or something. I don't know. It feels pretty tight to me. Alright, we're done. We're gonna go get this. Alright, so this uses a straight uh, SAE30. Don't use the SAE30 20 because those are for automobiles. This is for a four stroke small engine. So, um, yeah, let's, put a, let's put some fuel in it. This uses straight gasoline, just, just to let you know. Put that in first because we're going to contaminate this with oil. Or not. So just put a little bit because we need to test it, you know? Okay. Is that enough? A little bit more. Plenty fine. Okay, so now to put the uh, oil in, we need to probably use a different filter. I mean, funnel. Yeah, well, I'm not going to. 
keep this leveled. That's the first thing you want to do. And, uh, this takes about 3.04 ounces, I think that's what it says. So it's not too, too much, so I would go ahead and put something underneath here in case you spill. See, I'm going to just pull it out and check. Just a small amount. This is just a little bit more. Just a little bit small, small. That should do it. I just want to check the dipstick. It tells you how much. It should go up to right there. things go and never stop stripping. So that's why I put a sock in here and turn it upside down like that. So, so let's watch the primer bowl. Can you see the primer bowl? I mean um fuel lines. Good flow. Got fuel in the primer ball. There you go. Yep, it's returning. Return. 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 Looks like it wants to start, but I'm not sure why it doesn't doesn't go yet. Runs, runs, and then kind of falls flat on its face, right? Well, not really, I didn't push the throttle. Right, let's try it again. 
it says in the instructions, don't touch the throttle when you're starting it. So. So that looks like, uh, what am I thinking? I'm thinking we have a fuel delivery issue. That's the original problem. So, hmm. I remember these jets on this get clogged and they need to be reamed out. I remember this from a while ago. On the, uh, I did a, uh, if you watch one of my old videos, I worked on a, uh, is it a blower? Yeah, I think so. All right, I have an idea what's going on.